If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, truckers, drivers, and people who drive over midnight on rural, dark, haunted, and forest roads. What was your scariest encounter with a creature or unknown being on the road? This story starts around the 25th of December. I was enjoying a trip with my family to Santa Barbara. For a day trip, and because I'm a big museum nerd, I convinced everyone to go to Solvang, a Danish town in the middle of rural California. While going down the street, we were passed by a street view car. Right in front of us was a couple in their 20s, one had dyed hair. I continued on with my day. A few days later, the trip ends, and I start to head back home. As we were getting onto a winding country road at about 5 in the morning, way before the sun went up, on the side of the last suburban street before hours of abandoned highway was a white figure. Under a lone light lamp for a lady. She slouched slightly. She had pale skin. She had scraggly hair. But the weirdest of all is the complete lack of a face. I was a little freaked out by this, but I didn't want to wait and deal with drivers on New Year's Eve. Soon, thick fog set in, and I could barely see 10 feet in front of me. This road was very windy, as there was a valley below. After about 10 minutes of driving, the road started turning, and every 5 feet was a new sign saying what to do, slowly getting more nonsensical. From rock warnings back to back, to signs saying to turn off all lights, to signs saying to just stop, after a couple minutes, everything returned to normal. My theory is that this was a transitional space, and I have changed universes. About 10 years ago, my mom and I went to pick up my brother at a band rehearsal. We lived in a small town in Norway, and we had to drive through the forest to get to where my brother was. It was winter time, so it was very dark outside, the only light was the lampposts along the road. We drove down a little hill that flattens out before going down again. I know the road very well, and when the hill flattens, there is a bus stop, and on the other side, there are very thick rose bushes on a tiny hill. The road is lit up by a lamppost. Suddenly, I see this long, slender thing, all black, almost like a shadow. I could see that it had long arms and legs, but it had neither feet nor hands, and it looked like it had antlers and was about 2 to 3 meters tall. It looked like it moved slowly, like dragging its body over the road, but it was really fast and disappeared into the rose bushes. The thing is, I would have seen it because of the little hill, but I didn't. When I turned my head to see where it went, I saw that my mom had done the same thing. She turned back and looked at me and said, did you see that as well? And I nodded. Then she said, it might have been a moose. And I was like, mom, mooses don't walk on two legs. Then she said, yeah, I know. We have talked about it from time to time after that, and the only reason I don't think I had something like psychosis, or what it's called, is because we both saw it. I still don't know what it was, and I'm still looking for other people who have seen the same thing. A while ago, I heard about two different people having a similar experience, but with slim, tall, black dog-like things with the same features as the thing I saw. Many years ago, my ex-husband and I were living in Decatur, Tennessee, which is a very small town. There were only a few hundred people living there at the time. I had to clock in at work by 5 a.m., so I had to leave our house by at least 4.30 a.m. to make the almost 30-minute drive. One morning, I got into my car and backed out onto the road. As I'm looking into my rear view mirror and before I put the car in to drive, I notice a figure on the road, standing in the shadows between two street lights. The figure appeared to be female because I could make out long hair and breasts. The odd thing is, it isn't completely dark, so I should have been able to make out more features like clothing or shoes, but I couldn't. It seemed like the figure may have been naked. This happened during the winter, so if it were human, it should have had heavy clothes on. When I noticed the figure, it was looking around and standing in an almost half crouch. Then, all of a sudden, it quickly turned its head towards me as if it had just noticed me. If it were human, it should have noticed my tail lights pretty quickly. It then started running for my car. I freaked. I quickly put my car into drive and drove as fast as I could to work. The whole incident happened in a matter of seconds. The whole drive to work, I was afraid the figure would catch me, but it obviously didn't. I don't believe in ghosts, demons, or Bigfoot, so I watched the news that afternoon and for a few days after, but there was no mention of a naked person, a missing person, or anything that would give a logical explanation as to what I had seen. I have never seen anything like that before, and I have never seen anything like that since. I saw the creature again. I was driving back home from the store. The road I took was a very small road that had thick woods on both sides. This road is so small that if cars were going both ways, sometimes you had to pull off slightly to the side to let the other car pass. Lots of greenery surrounds this road, and there are slight dips on either side. 
no street lights or anything. So the only illumination is the car's headlights. Okay, I'm driving and chatting with my wife on the phone. As she's talking to me, I'm looking ahead at the road, not really to the sides. All of a sudden, I glance slightly to the side and see the creature stepping onto the road. The creature is about 20 feet ahead and to the left of me. All I saw was a large black figure with glowing eyes staring at me. I was able to see that it had pointy ears. I also noticed its front legs were much wider and thicker than the back legs. If you've ever seen TV shows depicting the way vampires move, like super fast, almost glitching across, that's how this thing moved to get in front of me. One second is on the side of the road, then one quick stride later it's in the middle of the road and beginning to approach my car. When it was 7 feet away, I started honking my horn. This whole time, which was about 30 seconds, I had gone silent on the phone, and at this point, my wife was yelling what's going on. I whispered to her that the wolf was back, then I hung up and grabbed my handgun because clearly the horn was not working. The only thing the horn did was stop it in its tracks, it didn't scare it off. I begin opening my right window, and I lean out, pointing the gun at the eyes. Then I fired. The thing held in pain and then ran off into the woods. After that, I sped home and told everyone. I know this sounds crazy, but my boyfriend at the time and I were staying at a family member's cabin in the woods. There are other cabins around, and it is close to a local lake that a lot of people frequent, so I wouldn't say it's secluded in any way. It was around 5 a.m., and we were leaving so I could drive him to work. While we were going down the road, I caught something out of the corner of my eye, so I slammed on my brakes. On the side of the road was a creature, for lack of better words. It walked slowly out in front of my vehicle, just staring as if it didn't care that I saw it. It was huge, probably around 6 or 7 feet, and was hunched over with its arms dragging the ground. It was also extremely pale and skinny, with its ribs showing. It was completely hairless, and even though my headlights shined on it, I don't remember making out what its face looked like. As it passed the front of my vehicle, it went behind someone's car at another cabin across the little dirt road I was on, which is the only way in and out. It watched as I drove away. After that day, I obviously refused to stay there, but my father did. He obviously didn't believe me until things started happening. My dad told me he heard something big running on the roof one night, and he went out to look, but no one was there. On another occasion, he heard a loud knock on the bathroom window, which would have been impossible considering the window is about 10 feet off the ground. Of course he ran outside, and again, no one was there, and nothing could have been used to reach that high. My ex and I were the only ones that ever saw it. I have thought about what I saw for years now, and it still perplexes me. Anyone have any insight on what I saw? I have been questioned, why didn't you run it over? I didn't feel threatened by it. It's like it was just curious. Also, I was in shock. Things like that aren't supposed to exist. Back in high school, two friends and I went on a burn cruise at around 1am I was in the back seat, and my good friend was driving, and my kind friend was in the passenger seat. We headed onto side roads, and we went around a corner. The second we finished the curve in the road, I looked out the windshield, straight ahead of the car, and saw a small orange ball or light. Fly across the road perpendicularly. This thing was moving so fast that it had tracks behind it. I say to my friends, what the hell was that? My driver friend says, what are you talking about? A friend in the passenger seat says, I ducking saw that too, it was moving unnaturally fast. Anyone ever see something like this? To this day, I can't come up with a reasonable explanation. It moved so fast that I only saw it for a split second. When I said it had tracers, it looked like it was 4 feet long. There were no buildings, rivers, or people by the road where I saw it. My theory is that my driving friend didn't see it, but me and my other friend did. The driving friend was slightly color blind, making him unable to pick up whatever this thing was. To start, this encounter didn't happen to me, but to my wife, literally about 45 minutes ago. She was visiting her dad with our 5-year-old daughter, who lives down an old, unlisted road. On one side, both sides of the road are just fields, and in the middle, on one side, sits her dad's house and the neighboring property, which her dad's house used to be a part of before it was annexed off. As she set off driving down the lane to come home, she came to a stop to adjust my daughter's seat belt. Out of the corner of her eye and standing in the field, she could make out the shape of a shadowy humanoid figure. Even in the distance, it appeared to be inhumanly tall with elongated arms. The next thing she knows, this thing runs across the field in a matter of seconds and is standing next to her driver's side door, the doors are locked, and it crouches down to look in the car. My wife pays this thing no attention as to not alert our daughter to its presence, but she can see it has no sign of a face, just a black mass, but she could feel it was looking at her. 
It then stood up to full height and did nothing, and she drove off as fast as she could. It didn't pursue the car, it just stood there and faded into the blackness. She arrived home safe but visibly shaken. Does anybody have any idea what this entity is? We live in the West Yorkshire area of the UK, if that helps. My friend tells me of a story that he remembers as clearly as day with his ex and friends driving in a car behind him. They were on the roads at 1 a.m., headed towards Bunny Man Bridge in Virginia, a local urban legend. Upon the windy, narrow road, his ex starts to scream loudly as they slow down into a turn as she sees a figure, and it catches my friend's attention immediately. He sees to his right, maybe 10 feet away in distance, what appears to be a human-like entity with a bronze-colored face and long, dark black hair, and was wearing what appeared to be colonial-like clothing but was staring off indirectly at the distance of the woods, not paying them any attention but in a clear enough view of discomforting distances. He immediately slams his foot on the gas and speeds off faster, calling his friend who was in the car behind him, they are also freaking out from what they saw. He made it very clear he was overwhelmed with a sense of evil or harmful energy and knew being around what he was wasn't good enough to investigate any deeper. They had to veer back in the direction to get back, and luckily, whatever they saw was no longer there. I asked if it could have been a person, but he said something about what he saw was no human being, as the eyes and face weren't normal and he couldn't grasp his thoughts at someone being out in such deep woods where no buildings were close by. Asking for any input anyone may have on what he saw. My friend and I had been out driving pretty late, probably at 2 a.m. we had been going at least 70 miles per hour, slowing down because our turn was coming up, so naturally, on this two-lane road, we were leaning towards the right. Suddenly we see something tall, lanky, and fast enough to avoid the car having to be on its hind legs. It crossed our headlights, coming from right to left, like a swoosh, but it was heading our way, and no matter how fast we had been going, it was conscious enough to avoid us. We couldn't describe it, but the silence and the realization that my friend and I had seen that suddenly hit. We freaked because the way it happened was so quick and unnatural, we were investigating and deducing everything. But it didn't make sense, it was no rake, no alien, but something. We couldn't put a finger to it. Now here's where it comes back. My friend and I were talking about it again were searching online. When we saw this figure, she made the exact estimate that it was 8 feet tall, based on my own car's height. This scared us, but it brought us to the conclusion of what we've seen. It's real, we wish we had a dash cam, but like any other sighting, we only have our own minds. I just saw something, and I don't really know how to explain it. I am a farmer in the Midwest of the US I am driving an auger wagon unloading a combine, and I looked out my right window facing east, over in this distance, about 200 yards along the edge of a field that borders a wooded area. I saw this thing, it looked human-ish, it was extremely tall, if I were to guess, it looked around 7 feet tall, walking on its legs like a person. But whatever this was, it was not human, its arms hung down to its knees, but the weirdest part of it was its head. I don't know if this was its actual head or if it was wearing it, but I looked like an elk skull with large antlers, elks are not native to where I am but the antlers were way too big to be a white-tailed deer. I could not tell if it was wearing clothes or not. I have no clue what this thing was. I called the combine operator, and he saw it too and has no clue either. Does anyone know what this thing is? Just down the road from where a few years ago I had previously lived, in southeast Australia, is the opening into about 100 acres of woodlands and bush that I frequently went into when I was younger to do the usual things, riding, camping, etc. I was out driving at around 11.30 pm with my girlfriend, and as we were in the area, I decided to show her the woodlands while we were there, as she loves everything to do with nature, and it was summer, so it was an extremely warm night. I left my car with the lights shining into the trees as we weren't going too far in and it was pitch black inside, and the two of us just kind of sat chatting, having a smoke, and generally relaxing. She was sitting on a sort of map of the area that had been put in on some plastic, and I was keeping an eye on the trees as I had a feeling that something was just wrong. I've read on here that a few people have said that they have felt that they were in danger, although nothing around them was off. It was this same feeling, every sense was almost reaching out, and my adrenaline was up, but there wasn't really anything in my eye line that seemed any different. After lighting another cigarette to calm my nerves, I scanned the tree line again and realized that it looked different than before. It was only after starting into the dark that I saw that there was moonlight now lighting up grass where it couldn't before, as there was a black shape blocking it that before I thought was a tree. I've got goosebumps just typing this, but the only way to describe it was that all sound just ceased and everything went dead silent, and a few seconds later, this disgusting feeling of dread fell over me, and I saw motion in the dark of the path as this thing crawled towards us on all fours. 
I've seen nearly every animal in the outback here, and we don't have any large predators like in the US or Europe, but somehow I knew this thing was a predator, and it wasn't hiding itself from us but just slowly crawling forward towards us. I don't know if my girlfriend saw it or not, as I couldn't look away, but just as it reached the line my car lights were able to illuminate, it reared up onto two legs and just sat staring at us. I am 6 feet 4 inches and this thing was about another meter larger than me, with arms that were far too long that reached down near the ground, and all I could make out was an off-white, almost yellowish fur on it, and in the dim light I could make out the silhouette of its head as like a dog or wolf. I wasn't able to move as it stared at me, but at this point, my girlfriend gasped, which seemed to break whatever was stopping me from thinking logically. I grabbed her by the arm and sprinted to my car, slammed the doors, and tore out of there as fast as I could, both of us too scared to speak until about half an hour later. We've both discussed it many times, and the feeling that we had was what I imagine a rabbit sees when it catches a wolf or fox looking at it, that this is something that would be able to end us with absolute ease if it so chose. Neither of us have been able to come up with any explanation for what it was, but it has definitely changed the way I view the woods and bush, and when I go camping or hiking now, I think back to that and wonder what it was and if I will ever see anything like it again. I'm a little freaked out, so let's jump right into this. I, 16 Fimala, and my friend, 15 Fimala, were driving to school. We always carpool because we're neighbors and go to the same school, so it just makes sense. It was just the two of us in the car. We live pretty far away from our school, so we usually take the back roads to get there in order to save time. One road we take has woods on either side and a sharp curve. We've taken this road nearly every day for the past year and a half and have had no problems, so this day, a Thursday, came as a shock. Our whole week had been terrible, and since we seem to be linked in some way, whenever one of us has a bad day, so does the other one. As I was coming up on this road, I swear I saw a man on the side of it, about to step onto the road. I slow down, as anyone who does when a man is about to step onto the road does, and notice that he's all black, like a shadow. He wore a suit, what seemed to be a trench coat, and a wide-brimmed hat. He was very sharply dressed for a shadow man. He didn't turn toward the car, so I remained going very slowly, but he continued to take a step on the road. However, right when his foot touched the road, he was no longer there. Instead, in his place was a black bird, we're almost sure it was a crow. The bird turned its head towards the car and flew off in the direction that the man had been walking. I stayed quiet for a few minutes, hoping that I was just seeing things and that my friend would soon ask why I had slowed down. Oddly enough, we both stayed silent. Eventually I worked up the courage to ask if she had seen the bird, not mentioning anything odd about it in case she hadn't. Her response? I uh, I saw a man. She then proceeded to describe what had happened exactly as I had seen it, right down to what the man had been wearing. We were absolutely shaken and might have cried a little. We live in a more superstitious part of our state, so we were brought up with the knowledge that crows are omens of death. At the end of the day, we were on our way home. We were still thinking about the birdman. We tried to do research to find anything about him, but we haven't found a single thing. Have any of you seen or heard of something like this? I'm from a rural area, so at night there's not much to do, so I'll go for drives around my area. I was out cruising in my parents' van one night around 2 a.m., and I was going to go up by one of my grandparents. To get there, you turn off the highway and go across some railroad tracks, and the road splits. You can go left or right, if you go right, there's a bend in the road that makes it difficult to see. So I get around the bend, and I see what looked like an older woman hunched over with two huge dogs standing on the side of the road. She didn't move or acknowledge me at all, even after I stopped and asked if she needed help. After all, why would a woman her age be walking at 2 in the morning? So I drive off a little sketched out, loop around a parking lot at the dead end, and start heading back to the highway, except this time when I went past her, she was in a full-blown sprint at the van. So I punched the gas to the rugs and sped the whole way home. I haven't gone back down that road since. Things we saw floating by while goofing around driving at night. One night, we were driving back from a party in a neighboring town. It was two of my friends and me. We were laughing and telling stories about the night. The old highway we took was a long, straight shot. It was boring and had very little light, if any at all. The horse has a reputation for taking lives. Some call it a witch but it just may be that it is so long, straight, and scarcely lit that people doze off or have a false sense of security. Whatever the reason, lots of people die of it. I was driving, and we had just gone over some railroad tracks. I knew that a very long straightaway lay ahead. So I decided to turn off my headlights and drive for a bit. My friends were a little startled but began to laugh and say I was crazy. 
So we kept on driving with the night sky, not another car in sight, our only light. I could see the outline of the road, so I felt pretty confident driving that way. But it wasn't long before something flew across the front of the car. It startled all of us. We went silent. I asked if they saw anything, and they both replied that they did. I asked my friend, who was next to me, what he saw. Just then again, from my side of the road, across our path, flew another white form. I stopped the car. I turned to my friend, who was sitting shotgun. I asked him, what did you see? He kept staring out the front windshield. I asked the same question again. He said it was a long, white ghost. That was what it looked like to me. A cheesy sheet with holes is kind of a ghost. That is the closest thing I can compare it to. It moved quickly and was gone. I got out of the car, to both of my friends' protests, and looked around. Nothing was out there. But I was scared there was. I got back in, and we went home. No laughing. Not a word. I don't bring it up with those friends. It's too weird. And all we can ever do is speculate on what we saw. But I don't drive with my lights off anymore. I don't need to find out what it was. I was up a logging road with my friend a few years ago. We were just doing some target practice and getting our rifles sighted in for the hunting season. After a few hours on this old road, no one had been up for a while. We started to leave. We pulled over a little down the road to relieve ourselves before the hour-long drive home. We pull off onto an old service road that just goes up and dead ends at a gate. Right when we were stepping out of the car, this yell came from what sounded all around us. The yell was like a woman mixed with a dying elk. Not a normal sound at all. Then the smell hit us. Like old, rotting meat. We got into the car and sped down the road. It only took 15 minutes from the main area, where the road split into two, to the rock pit we shot at. When we made it back there after speeding down the road, it took 30 minutes, and it was dead silent. You couldn't even hear the river by the road. We are still friends, but we don't bring that up. It was a very weird experience. I was wondering if anyone here from East Central Kentucky has ever been harassed by some white thing in the backwoods. It's been a few years since I've seen it since I don't go to the backwoods very much anymore, but the first time was while I and two friends were walking down Poor Town Road, walking because we were too young to drive at 15 each, to make our way to a gas station for a snack. Right before we got to Danville Road, I looked behind and saw a blur of white run across the road and into the woods. I was about 5 feet 4 inches at the time, I know I'm short, and its height, from what I could tell, was about stomach high, and it passed only about 2 feet behind me. Being a startled teen, I yelled, what the duck was that? Which got the attention of my two friends. I told them what I saw, and the one who lived there said he heard about something like this from his uncle. The group vote was to go back home and lock all the doors and windows. The second time was a few months later, when Pokemon Go came out. It was the middle of the night again, but with just me and a friend from the area, and we eventually made our way to where I first saw it when we both got the feeling of being watched. I don't know what it was about the feeling, but we both turned and ran back down the road, and we got in front of the friend's house. We looked down the road and saw it sitting there watching us, too far to make out any details. I yelled duck you. At it, and we quickly made our way inside. I don't go to that area anymore, and that was the last time I saw it. For some reason, when I think about that thing, I start crying. When I was in my early teens, 2000s, my family, mum, stepdad, and brother, and I went on holiday to a beautiful cottage in Wales. We liked to explore the area, so we drove around a lot, stopping at abandoned houses along the way. One evening, we drove to this small village on the coast, which seemed just like any other out-of-the-way village in Wales. From our arrival, the trip went badly, starting with almost driving off the cliff due to it being completely pitch black. After composing ourselves from our near-death experience, we wandered along the cliff edge, where we found a trail leading down to the water. As we started walking down this road, we started to see some abandoned houses. Some of which looked like they were almost built into the cliff. On the water side, there was a three-story building between the road and the water, all these buildings were very obviously abandoned. As my brother, seven to eight years old, was looking around, he noticed a light switch on the top floor of the three-story building to our left. The light stayed on for about 10 to 20 seconds, which really freaked him out, and he insisted that we leave. We tried to calm our nerves and stay to look around for a few more minutes, but all of us started to feel very uneasy. On top of the cliff, probably about a mile or two away, was a huge building that resembled either a prison or an old-fashioned asylum. Before we left, an alarm from this huge building started blaring in the distance, so we just got the F out of there. 
As we left the cliff and started driving through the village, a police car appeared behind us with no lights, following our every turn in the pitch black. My brother and I, who were in the back of the car, could not take our eyes off of this police vehicle. It followed us continuously until we reached the sign, which said, Welcome to. Neither he nor I can remember where this was exactly. After this, the car drifted off into the distance and out of view. All of us were very shaken up by this experience, most likely made worse by it being late at night with little light pollution. Since this experience, we have tried multiple times to find out where this village is. No matter how hard we look, we cannot find it. Which kind of adds to the creepiness. My experiences with shadow people. 1. A few years ago, my ex, Will, and I were living at my mills. One night, I was home alone, waiting for Will to return. It was about 1 a.m. when I heard him drive up, so I went to the front door to greet him. As I opened the door, I saw him getting out of the driver's side of the car and also a dark, shadowy figure walking from the passenger side of the car, which was closer to where I was standing. I started to ask, who's that with you? But then I realized that no one else had actually gotten out of the car, and this shadow person had then walked off to the side, and whoever it was seemed to just evaporate into nowhere. I just figured that I was overtired and said, my eyes are playing tricks on me, I'm starting to see things. Will replied, no, I saw it too. The yard was well lit up, and there was no place for a person to hide or leave the yard unnoticed. Upon inspection, we found no one. 2. This happened a week ago. I live near a soccer oval, where there is a reserve with a lot of trees and a creek running along one side of the oval. There is also a long pipeline that runs along one of the main roads, cutting across the creek. It was just as the sun was going down, still enough to see a little ahead of us, and my sister and I were walking along the pipeline when I noticed someone crossing the road as a car was coming. I couldn't make out any features besides a black shadow, and it was as though I could see the car right through the person. The car didn't slow down at all, and as the person reached the pipeline, they just vanished. There was nowhere they could have gone, and my sister insisted that she was watching the car. There was definitely no one crossing the road, but I know what I saw. I see it very clearly. So I was driving home around 11 p.m. last night, and I saw a large bipedal thing run across the road. It was probably around 6 feet 7 inches, vaguely grayish, and slightly fuzzy, but that could have been the lighting. It was incredibly skinny and muscular, with very long legs and arms ending with a long clawed finger. I didn't get a look at anything above mid-torso. I know it was real because the guy driving towards me slammed on his brakes and swerved some. I kept driving, kind of spooked, pulled into my driveway, and the neighbor's dogs started freaking out, which is not normal for them. I get to the door, and it's unlocked. It's a little odd, but my roommate doesn't always lock it when he goes to bed. So I head upstairs, go down the hall, and turn on the bathroom light. I see something near the top of the stairs, so I reach over and turn on the hall light. Nothing there, needless to say, I'm starting to freak out some. Then I hear something on the stairs, it sounds kind of like a very large dog with a bit of heavy breathing and claws on the carpet, so I pop into my room and grab a gun because, hell, nope, no no no. Kinda went duck it, if I die, I die and go sweep the house. I didn't find anything, but everything felt wrong, like I was being watched. I made sure everything was locked, went upstairs, and locked my bedroom door. I tried to get some sleep, but I kept hearing things in the house, so no go. But I fell asleep at some point, went to leave for work, and there was a 5.6 inch scratch on the outside of my front door about eye level. I'm in central Virginia, if that helps, so lots of swamps, marshes, and forests. My dad had a very strange encounter on a desolate rural highway in mid to late June of 1988, just a year and a half before I was born. He was driving from Nevada to California on Highway 120, a two-lane mountain road that cuts through Yosemite National Park and crosses mountain passes at altitudes of over 8,000 feet. It was about 3 a.m. at night, there wasn't another car in sight, and the road was surrounded by a dense redwood forest on both sides. My dad abruptly noticed a figure in the distance. It was a woman waving her arms frantically, standing in the middle of the road. Desiring to avoid confrontation with a bum seeking a needless favor or a criminal trying to trick him, he veered left and drove past the woman. However, the moment he drove past her, his conscience caught up with him. He thought about how he would feel if he picked up a newspaper later that week with an article about a woman who went missing near Yosemite. On a second thought, he pulled over to the side of the road, about 500 feet past the woman. Even though he was somewhat far away, he was still able to see the woman somewhat clearly through a combination of the particularly bright moonlight that night and his car's tail lights. When he looked back, 
he saw that the woman was no longer waving and was just standing there. He thought this was really strange, if she really needed help, she would have rushed over to the car, right? So my dad waited for about 20 to 30 more seconds, and the woman just continued to stand there. At this point, my dad started to get really creeped out. Did this woman have an accomplice or two hiding in the woods by the road? Was this an ambush? It was at this point that my dad hit the gas and got the duck out of there. I've been to Dyer Lane several times. The first time I went was in 2011. I had heard about the Phantom Cop, and I wanted to go check it out. I was with a friend and my daughter. My friend was driving, my daughter was the front passenger, and I was behind the driver. It was after 1 a.m. we were less than halfway to the first bend on Dyer Lane, and we were creeping along slowly with all the windows down. Suddenly, I heard a kitten crying. We stopped the car, and I got out and found the kitten. While we were sitting there discussing what to do with the kitten, a car appeared, coming up on us quickly. He turned the spotlight on and flashed lights. A cop walks up to my window and asks what we are doing. I told him we were looking for the phantom cop, and we all laughed, but he just stood there. I asked him if he had heard about the phantom cop, and he told me no. I didn't think much about the fact that his car was an old box-style police car from the 40s or 50s. Nor the fact that his uniform was green, more like an army uniform, because we were technically in Roseville. I explained our dilemma over the kitten. He offered to take the kitten up the road to a farm that he knew, where they take in stray cats. He pointed in a direction where we later found out in daylight that no house exists. Anyway, I gave him the kitten, and he cautioned us to be careful. We then began driving toward the bend. I said, what if that's the phantom cop? Let's watch where he goes. We slowed way down, waiting for him to drive closer behind him. We kept our eyes on him, and all of a sudden, his headlights disappeared. We found a wide spot in the road and turned around, never taking our eyes off where he was. We sped all the way to Watt, and he had vanished. This happened about two years ago. Me and two of my friends were driving in the middle of the day back to my friend's place, Vancouver, BC. We were driving down a quiet street with houses on either side, and there was no one outside or driving on the road with us. We were going down the road, and there was a man standing on the sidewalk. He was an old man wearing a suit and a hat, like a fedora but not quite, and he was holding a briefcase. The part that was so goddamn scary is that he was bent over perfectly sideways, in a way that a human shouldn't be able to bend. His head was at his waist level, and he would have been probably 7 or 8 feet tall if he had straightened out. He watched us as we drove by, and as soon as we passed, everyone in the car had visceral reactions to it. Anyone who knows me will tell you that I am by no means an emotional person, but as soon as we drove by, I broke down in tears. One of my friends started gagging and actually ended up vomiting about an hour later, and my other friend, who was driving, screamed at us to shut the duck up and later told us he felt so angry he wanted to crash the car. It was honestly one of the most jarring experiences of my life, and until now, I've been far too afraid to try and find out any details about it. If anyone knows what I may have seen and could give me details, I would really appreciate it. As I said, I have essentially no knowledge about any of this, so anything helps. The other day, I was driving pretty late at night. I know the area well, I drive this route three or more times a week, and it's a relatively straight shot. Only two turns. I was driving, and my car started acting strange. Turned off in the middle of nowhere. I turned it back on with no problems. I kept driving, and after 5 minutes or so, I realized I literally had no idea where I was. I kept passing these farm things with huge stalls and lights, but without the actual barn. It is hard to explain. My GPS stopped working. I had no idea what road I was actually on. I literally had a full-blown panic attack and started crying. So I parked my car and rolled the window down to get some air and gather myself. As I cried, I heard my cry being mocked in the field. I stopped and got silent, and it also stopped. Then, after like two seconds, it started crying again. I've heard of skinwalkers, and I was totally convinced that's what it was. I have literally never been so scared shless in my entire life. I just started zooming down the road in hopes I'd find a town and be able to start driving again when it's daylight. After zooming in to see how long I had hit a set of train tracks, my car turned off again. I stopped, opened my hood, checked my oil, as that's all I know how to do, and got back in my car. Started it. Worked fine. I started driving for a few minutes and then bammed in right in the middle of a small, unincorporated town that I'm pretty familiar with. But it's much further from my last known location. I drove home like normal, checked my car out the day after with a code reader, and it was fine. I told one of my friends about it. My car died, and I, like Quantum, jumped into a different space and heard an entity. 
Now I am wondering if that stuff is fake or if it's a mixture of people's experiences. One early summer morning in the year 2000. I got up and was ready to drive my mom to her job at a local retirement home. It was dark starting out, but the sun was gradually coming up. I dropped her off and started returning to her house. Halfway back, driving on a country road densely populated with trees and houses, I noticed a car coming because I could see its high beaming lights from a short distance. I also saw a large black dog in my path, standing completely still with its head pointed forward. It had a slender build. Having only a few seconds to think, I decided to continue forward and brace for the impact of running into this dog. I closed my eyes as I got closest to it and continued to drive without swerving, and to my surprise, I felt nothing. I slowed down to check for the dog, and there was absolutely nothing back there. As I continued my drive, I felt weird because there was no way I would have missed that dog. It was not facing me. It was facing right. I would have struck it broadside. Anyway, I am thankful I didn't swerve. I feel like had I swerved, things would have been very different for me today. I do believe I could have died. Also, I watched the movie Black Dog months before this incident. Just thinking about this made me a believer. Alright, here's something creepy from good old Blighty. More precisely, North Yorkshire. In 2015, myself and my sister took a little road trip across the coast road so we could visit Whitby and other seaside places like that. It was a typical trip, stop for food, take some photos, and before we knew it, it was getting late, so of course we started heading home, which must have been around 40 miles away across Moorland. Anyway, we're driving slowly along the moortop. It's dark and a warm evening, it was June, so it had gotten rather late to be dark. As we were going across the moorland, a mist appeared in front of the car. We rationally thought it was moorland, it's damp, and high up stuff like this always happens. Except as we pass through the mist, we see something running from the car. My sister had slowed down because of the mist, so we could see this almost dog running away from the car. We slow down even more because we don't want to frighten the dog and cause it to hurt itself by falling into a ditch or running back into the car. But as we slow down, it stops. So we stop, and it turns around. Its eyes were so red that we just stared. Before we said nope, my sister managed to shunt the car around it and speed off. It kept looking all the time we sped off, and I think it followed for a bit. When we got home, we both knew we had probably seen a Bargast, so we were obviously freaked out but also a little bit curious, so we tried going back out a few weeks later but saw nothing. I saw something that I can definitely rationalize, but in my heart I know wasn't right. I leave for work earlier than most. Anywhere from 4.35 am I'm in my vehicle driving into work. The area in which I live is one of the only parts of the state that is actual woods. It's a residential area but we're in the tress. Spread out in darkness at night with the exception of a few streetlights, if that helps for a mental picture. The area also has a history of Native Americans and early settlers which I know is where much of the US folklore originated. However, being rational and through my research I tend to believe the more grounded explanations of the stories we've all heard about. Anyways, on one of my earlier mornings recently and after locking my door and walking to my car I see a figure in the middle of the road. The figure is illuminated just enough to see that it looks like a person but not enough to see clothes or features. It seems to be facing my direction but I'm looking at a shadow basically. I don't call out but I stand at my car looking as my mind goes from what's my weird ass neighbor doing out here at this time to why haven't they moved while a chill creeps up my spine and radiates throughout my body. If I've learned anything about instincts in my time it's that your body will tell you when something isn't right. With that being said and for whatever reason I decide to get closer but the instant my body moved so did the figure. In a full sprint it makes for the tree line and just as it hits the five feet of grass between the road and trees it dove, took one bound on all fours and disappeared into the woods. I say to myself nope and get in my car to go to work. I did put my high beams on and turn my car slightly to face to woods at the point of entry but of course saw nothing. Since then I've seen nothing and have never before or after heard any story similar. I don't know what I truly saw but it was enough to never go into the woods unarmed again. Thoughts? Did I see a something like a skinwalker or should I just keep an even closer eye on those living around me? This encounter occurred on the island of Guam in the early 2000s. A full car of my friends and I were out really late after seeing a midnight showing of a movie and going out to eat at one of the local 24-7 hotspots. We were driving up to the northern part of the island, near the mall of Micronesia. The roads were fairly bare, and we were all laughing and joking around when I suddenly started feeling this strange feeling come over me. I started looking around, slowly noticing that outside the car, everything seemed to be almost slowing down. It was as if there was no wind, no sound, this eerie silence. 
that no one else seemed to be noticing but me. We slowly came to a stop at the streetlight, and that's when I started to tune everyone else out in the car in efforts to focus and observe what exactly seemed to be creating this odd, sudden sensation and occurrence. I mean, this is a tropical island, one on which I was born and raised. It's always abuzz with various sounds, whether it be the ocean, the wind, the trees, the wildlife, insects, etc., but suddenly it was as if there was nothing. I looked around slowly while the car was stopped, waiting for the light to change. It was almost as if everything, including the sounds in and around and from the car, were suddenly muted. I looked at the trees and bushes, buildings, power lines, and streets, and nothing, absolutely nothing, was even flinching. The lights in the building and streetlights weren't even flickering. It all seemed to have a strange silence to it. I was right about to speak up and point it out to my friends when the light changed and the car started its slow acceleration forward. I found myself looking around and eventually behind us to check just one more time to see if maybe I was just imagining it all, and that's when I saw it. This huge, bulky humanoid creature that I can only describe as looking like a Hulk-sized and shaped giant being, I could not make out its skin tone, color, or detailed features. It was dressed in what looked like tattered clothing and also seemed to be wearing a strange cape-like black fabric that was almost shadow-like in appearance, except for the noticeable fabric-like features of a strange texture and rips. I tried to focus on it to grasp more detail as it landed on the arm where the traffic lights also hung, but it seemed as if just as soon as it had landed and glanced around, it leapt or flew off. That's when I began to shout, guys, guys, did you see that? Did you see that? Tell me you all, or someone saw that too while also pointing at where I had just seen it. My friend stepped on the brakes, and I could feel everyone else looking at what I could now not take my eyes off. The traffic pole arm and lights were now deeply bouncing up and down like a harsh metal spring from what I can only guess was a large weight pushing up off it. I could hear everyone audibly gasping and saying variations of what the fuck? And is it an earthquake? Is a storm coming? What's going on? That's when everyone around me started to also notice the lack of breeze and eerie silence that was occurring. The car wasn't shaking or moving and neither was anything else but the traffic lights and the extended pole it was attached to. My friend, who was driving, slowly started to drive again as I continued to ask if anyone had seen anything. After driving for a few minutes, it was as if the silence and environmental oddity slowly started to fade and normalcy began to creep back in from the inside out. Everyone else seemed to be trying to figure out what, why, and how the traffic lights and extended pole were able to move the way they did. That's when I figured out that no one else had seen what I had seen. I tried to explain to everyone what I had seen and what had done it, but I was met with a kind of almost pitying skepticism. I tried multiple times to convey to them exactly what I had seen, but it ended up being futile as they slowly began taking turns brushing it off with one false explanation after another. I don't know if it was to comfort me, themselves, or maybe both. All I know is that they never tried to discuss it ever again, and it slowly ended up fading into obscurity. I do know that for a few months afterward, no one else in that group of friends seemed to ever want to go out late again. Please tell me if you've ever seen or experienced something similar. I really want to know if this creature or being has ever made itself seen by anyone else. I was on I-40 heading west before Oklahoma City, and it was a weird thunderstorm that night when, about 5 miles before the one after that sharp curve, I noticed a really nice cherry red 70-ish Camaro parked on the side of the road that just almost seemed like it appeared out of thin air because I saw no silhouette of it in my lights or anything and two guys wearing clothes straight from that time period were sitting on the trunk, waving me down to stop. It was pouring rain, and these guys were dry. I have no idea what I saw, but it just seemed so strange, especially since it was close to 2 a.m. when this all went down. I slowed down on that curve, though. Another experience I've had was coming from Reno, and I stopped at the rest area on the EB side of the emigrant pass due to snow and the chain law. It caught me with my pants down. Well, it was about 1 a.m. when I pulled into the rest area. There was one truck all the way at the entrance, and it was all dark, so that driver was knocked out. I went all the way to the last spot, pulled the brakes, and started getting my bunk set to sleep when I started hearing rocks and pebbles hitting my sleeper. I thought it was hail and paid it no mind, but then I started hearing a grunt here and there, so I stayed quiet. About five minutes passed, and something hit the dumpster next to me. It was really hard to make a loud bang, and I about jumped out of my skin, but after that, the noises just stopped. I don't scare easily at all, but whatever that was, I wasn't going out to see what made all that noise. Let's just say my cookery machete stayed a little closer to my side that night. Take what you will from both of these stories, they are 100% true. If you weren't there, you really don't have a say in what happened or if you should believe it. So I drive a lot for work, 
just around my city, Indianapolis, and see tons of interesting little chunks of life. Since it's just me and my GPS, I really study the minutia of the places I go and enjoy looking at the graffiti, house decorations, people interacting, etc. This day, I was going from the west side back toward the east side, and there's a long stretch of road that, if you saw it in the backwoods, would look right at home. Trees thick on either side of the road and an overhang of branches and leaves make a lovely tunnel that almost touches overhead. I've been down it before with no ill effect. After a little while, it connects to a busy main street, and the illusion is shattered. About midway is an underpass, beneath perhaps a four-lane street. Not long, but not terribly short. It's covered with a ton of colorful and interesting graffiti, and that's pretty much all that's going on there. This trip, I noticed from a long way off that a vehicle was parked under the underpass, pulled off to one side. As I got closer, I realized it was in the middle of the underpass, barely pulled off the road. It's not exactly a high traffic area, so sure. I prepared to do a big, slow swerve around it and keep trucking, I know better than to stick my nose into things. As I passed the older, banged up, dirty SUV, the strangest thing happened. My lights switched on, and my brights flipped on. Now, I drive with my lights in auto mode because of Indiana. I can be sunny, rainy, snowy, and foggy all in one drive across town. So it's always just in auto, and I otherwise ignore them. They were flipped to on, an action that requires me to turn a knob around the bottom level of my dashboard on my left. At the same time, my brights were switched to on, not flash, an action that requires me to push the end of my turn signal while pulling the signal arm itself toward me, also on my left. All this while passing an empty, apparently abandoned vehicle and scanning the area for people or movement. Going about 15 miles an hour. Definitely not flailing around and turning on things. I drove out of the underpass and turned everything off. No one showed up around the vehicle for as long as I could see out my rear view mirror, and I got to the main street with no other incident. Thoughts? A long time ago, my mother, at random and rare times, would go on these drives. Her term of a drive sometimes meant going from going to a town over an hour away to visiting a city a state over. And I would at times join her on these trips when she called, and because, you know, I have nothing better to do. This happened on one of these many trips. We were returning to the town that we both lived in. It was in the afternoon, two or three, and the weather throughout the day was fair, with some clouds. We were going through a town where I used to go to school, where she turned to me and asked if it was alright if we took a detour to check her boyfriend's place and animals. I knew these roads, so I just shrugged and said, sure. It was a 15 minute detour after all. So she turned off the main road and down a road I knew all too well. As I said, I used to go to school in the town we just passed, and this road we were currently on was the road my bus would take, and after all those years, I knew that road. I knew every corner, every bump, and every hill. The road itself was somewhat small, with enough room for two cars to drive on with ease, anything bigger, well, someone was driving on the curve. So here we were on this same road I took when I went to school, the same road I dreaded so many times. As we made our way down the road, I turned to the road ahead of us, and in the direction we were going, there was a figure. From the distance we were at, I could see that he was a man, but more importantly, a farmer. If you could imagine the stereotype of what a farmer would look like, you would be close to what he looked like. The wide rim hat, overalls, and boots. As we got closer, I could see more detail about him, and more red flags were just going off in my head. I could see the white hair, the color of the flannel shirt, and him having one of the straps of the overalls off. However, he just looked off, his clothes looked like something from the 60s or 70s, and second, he seemed to be oblivious to us. I thought he would turn to look at us or just walk slightly off the road to give us room, but he didn't. Soon we were only a few feet away, and I was focusing on him. As we passed him, my eyes followed him, and as soon as he reached the side passenger window, I sat down. He vanished. Completely evaporated right in front of me. I turned so hard to look behind me that I would have given myself whiplash. I was looking to see where he went, all I saw was the road, a single tree, and the fence line to paddocks. There is no farmer anywhere. As I stare, questioning my sanity, I hear. You saw him too? I turn to my mother, asking if she saw a farmer. She responded with a yes. I then described what he looked like, and again, she confirmed it. She saw the same person as I did. And I saw him vanish into thin air. Like I said, I have been on that road many times, before and after this event, and I have never seen him again. Me and my best friend, while he's driving, 
have seen a person with no distinguishable features run across the road either right before we hit it or a few feet ahead before we hit it, run across the road in front of us, and disappear to the other side. The figure always runs from the left to the right. And it's always too dark to see what's coming. The first time it happened was at night, and the figure ran across the road and then jumped off the other side. We saw it jump from one railing across the road, jump off the other railing, and jump into the bayou. It wouldn't see it go inside to bayou. The road was a bridge, and the figure would have jumped into a bayou, about 30 feet below. It happened so close to us that we could have hit it, but we didn't. The second time it happened was tonight. The figure ran across the road in front of us and into a large road that led into a neighborhood. It would have been visible on the street by the time we passed it, and it completely disappeared into thin air. We were so close to it, we could see it running, but we were too far away to hit it. Yet we were close enough to pass it by and see it, but we never did. Both times, me and my friend acknowledged what happened, and he had seen what I had seen. There was never any denying, and we were always shocked and freaked out every single time. I don't believe in coincidences, and I have a history of demonic activity in my life. I simply have never experienced it with another person before like this who wasn't family, and I'm positive that this was not a person because the things that were done during both times were not humanly possible unless somebody was trying to commit suicide the first time, and this second time tonight somebody spontaneously combusted into the air. I would love it if somebody could tell me what they think this means, if they have been through the same thing before, or something similar. This is the story of an experience my brother and I had many years ago in the backwoods of coastal Washington state. I was roughly 22 years old, and my brother was 19. At this time in my life, I loved to go on long drives through the mountains, sometimes after dark. This night proves to be one neither of us will ever soon forget. We embarked on an old logging road on the outskirts of a town called Montesano. We were both very familiar with said road and had traveled it many times during the day and at night. This trip quickly began getting very strange. The first strange thing was that we saw a triangular shaped light emitting from the tops of some trees on a ridge we could see from the road. At first, we assumed it was a feller buncher working late. It wasn't a solid triangle either, there were, I believe, six points of light arranged in the shape of a triangle. The color of this light looked like the color of a campfire and even appeared to flicker like a campfire. For some reason I cannot explain, we wanted to go towards these lights to try and figure out exactly where they were coming from. This is where it started getting very strange. While we were driving deeper into the woods, we began to notice that nothing looked familiar anymore, in fact, we went up an extremely steep hill that I had most definitely never gone up before. This hill was so steep, and since the road was gravel, the car we were in struggled to get up it without burning off the tires. Once we made it to the top of this hill, we began seeing cold decks or stacked up piles of logs ready to be loaded onto a logging truck. It also appeared that we were in a clear-cut area. Later, we found out that there were no logging operations happening in that area whatsoever. We kept going for about another 15 or 20 minutes until the light we initially saw was no longer visible. I asked my brother to stop the car so I could take a leak. He did. Once I got back into the car, we both looked at each other and went pale white. It felt like waking up from a dream, if that makes sense. Neither of us could explain why, but we felt like we needed to get as far away from that area as quickly as possible. We were spooked to the maximum at this point, but we didn't know why. On our way off of that road, we never ever went back down any steep hills, and we never saw those piles of stacked up logs again either. We drove for about an hour toward those lights we saw. When we were leaving this road, it only took about 10 or 15 minutes to get back to the main paved roadway. Roughly an hour of lost time. Some high strangeness definitely went on that night in those woods, and to this day I cannot explain it. I've thought about this experience a lot over the last 10 years, and to this day, every hair on my body stands up thinking about it. I'm not sure what it was that we experienced, but it definitely isn't something either of us will forget about any time soon. I was young when it happened, roughly 17, and me and my friend liked to ride around on summer nights in my mom's truck. I'm 27 now, and me and him are still close to this day. So this particular night we rolled up our blunts for the night, as we always did, and looked for other friends to throw money on the high rides we always took. I was rebellious in those days, there was no care in the world. I rolled up five blunts, each a gram, and called three other friends, as we were still in high school, broke no jobs, and we needed others to throw down for gas. We drove from Bridgeview to downtown Chicago, and then the nights would eventually end up on 107, a road in the forest preserve that had no lights, so cops weren't a problem, as who likes to sit in the woods in pitch black? We did this three nights a week in that summer, so it was routine to us, but this night was different. 
we had recently seen some weird stuff going on in his house, like footsteps when no one's home, etc. If you want to know more about that, just ask me, I'll be happy to tell you about that creepy day. So anyway, after that creepy experience, I just wanted to let it go behind me and just pretend it's all in my head. Yeah, funny how that worked, but anyway, let me continue. So we're driving towards the end of the night, one blunt left, and we decided, hey, let's go down 107, so we did. I was handed the blunt, took a couple hits, and passed it to my friend Christian, he's driving, I'm in the passenger seat. As I'm doing this, I look ahead and see this figure walking towards us in the distance. I keep looking at it, and as we get closer, I see it's a girl walking on the side of the road on our side towards us. She's really pale, really pale, head down, dark black hair, and a white dress. I tell my friend, yo, do you see that? He responds, yeah. I'm telling him something along the lines of, what is this girl doing? The guys behind them start to lean forward out of their seats. And we were about a car length from her. I started to turn my head, and her body just turned into a black figure, almost a shadow, and it, not she anymore because it just looked like a figure, jumped in front of the truck and said, oh, shit the guys behind me gasped. I quickly looked back and said, bro, did you hit her? The driver got scared and said, Ike. I kept looking behind us. He slowed down, and there was no one there. Did the car tumble over anything or make a sound like we hit something? She just disappeared. We quickly drove off, freaked out, and I asked everyone, did you see that? They replied yes, one of them was too freaked out to even answer, he was maybe 14, so I understood. It wasn't until months later that I found out about the resurrection. Mary's grave was 10 minutes away, I know it's a little stretch to say her spirit traveled from Bridgeview to the next town over, but if that wasn't her, I don't know what it was. I know one person is going to believe, and that's okay. I can't believe myself when I tell people, so I stop telling people, but I have to ask those guys every couple years just to make sure we all saw that. This happened about 13 years ago, when I was a sophomore in college, attending a liberal arts school in Suffolk County, New York. Within the first month or two of my freshman year, I found myself in a very tight-knit group of fellow theater geeks, six guys, myself included, and one girl and they all loved horror movies and ghost stories. I had found my crew. Freshman year was tough, but we all held each other up and made the whole experience more enjoyable for one another. At the beginning of sophomore year, we decided that in October, as the Halloween season was ramping up, we would find a creepy wooded spot in a nearby town some night and scare the crap out of ourselves. We did some research and found that there was a particularly isolated area about 30 minutes away, infamous for paranormal sightings. Perfect. The seven of us split into two different cars and headed out into the night. Allow me to set the scene. You turn off a busy main road flooded with strip malls, restaurants, and whatnot, and you are almost immediately greeted by complete darkness. Again, this area was very heavily wooded, it was essentially a large web of winding roads surrounded by trees. There are very few street lights and very few houses. Without a GPS or a good sense of direction, one could easily get lost in there. We all made sure to have fully charged phones and flashlights, just in case, but the goal was to keep driving until we collectively decided to pull over and go exploring. So per the directions, we made a left off of the main road, driving for 30 minutes or so into this dark network, picking directions at random, just getting intentionally lost. Our cars made a turn, and, to our surprise, there was a huge log in front of us. We had reached a dead end of some kind, with nothing but trees beyond it. We all got out to see what exactly this was, stepped over the log, and noticed two narrow trails leading in different directions. This seemed like as good a time as any to grab our flashlights and do some amateur ghost hunting. We flipped a coin and set off on the trail to the right. The trail was so narrow that we had to walk single file to avoid getting whacked by branches. For whatever reason, I ended up in the back. I'm usually pretty rational and level-headed, but I have to say, the further we went in, the more I was overcome with an uneasy feeling. I kept hearing sounds deep in the woods, unable to shake the feeling that we were being watched. But I seemed to be the only one who heard these things, so I shrugged it off as my imagination. And, in any case, the whole point of us being there was to get scared. Not to mention the fact that we were seven able-bodied college students. What would we come across that could take us down? We headed down this trail for about 20 minutes, and just when I thought it would never end, we came to a massive clearing. And I mean massive. It was a large, open field of unkempt grass comparable in scope to a golf course, but not nearly as well manicured. Trees surrounded the entire field, which was so large that we could not see the end of it from where we were standing. I was thrilled to get out of that narrow trail, but I don't think any of us were expecting to find an area so vast. 
one of us looked to the right and said, hey, check that out. We all turned, and there was an old, dilapidated house several hundred yards away. The house was completely dark, with no cars or signs of anyone actually living there. We walked over and shined our flashlights at it, and sure enough, the windows and doors were all boarded up. I managed to peer between the boards on one of the windows, and what I could see was an old white couch covered in plastic but an otherwise empty room. Whoever used to live here was long gone. Because there was no way in and because we all felt sufficiently creeped out by the house anyway, we decided to walk closer to the trail we had come in from, have a seat in the field, and figure out where to go next. We walked towards the narrow trail, but before we could sit, my friend Mark stopped what he was doing. His expression dropped, and he pointed. We all turned, and, on a very far side of the field, directly across from where we had come in, we could see someone tall, lanky, and pale dancing among the trees. And by dancing, I mean skipping around, grabbing a tree, swinging around it, and then doing the same to another tree. Basically, a do see do The moon was so bright and the woods so dark, it actually took a second for us to really understand what we were looking at. Jay, the 6 feet 4 inches skeptic of the group, wasn't seeing it. I learned from him, pointed in that direction, and said, Jay, look where I'm pointing. Don't you see that? He squinted a bit, and the second that he saw it, he gasped with everything he had, clutched my arm, and whispered, what the duck is that? What happened next sent shockwaves through all of us. Whoever this was, they stopped dancing, looked in our direction, and started charging straight at us. Without even thinking, we freaked and ran back to the trail. Yet again, Jay was the only one who didn't see what was happening. He shouted after us, guys, what is it? Where are you going? After about 15 seconds of running like hell, I heard Jay scream, holy shit. I looked back and saw his flashlight following the rest of us into the trail. While the walk into the woods took about 20 minutes, we made it back to our two cars, hopped in, and were peeling away closer to five. Once we were a safe distance away, we pulled over, got out, and checked in with each other about what just happened. My heart was pounding, and I know everyone else was feeling the same way. Nearly 15 years later, we are all still friends, living in different states yet keeping in touch through marriages, divorces, children, etc. But occasionally, out of the blue, one of us will send a group text to the others with something to the effect of, the woods. That really happened, right? It most certainly did. That experience is always in the back of my mind, and I'm pretty sure it always will be. Here's the thing that still resonates with me about that night, whoever that was, they were dancing maniacally in the woods at one in the morning and then ran directly for a group of young adults, not at all phased by the fact that they were severely outnumbered. Did he know we were there from the second we parked? Was he the sound that I kept hearing when we walked the trail? Whatever the case may be, when he came for us that night, you can be sure none of us wanted to stick around and see what he was truly capable of. In the middle of March 2020, I started a new gig hauling chemicals and was sent out to the Mojave Desert to pick up calcium chlorate out of the salt mines. I picked up my brother as usual, and we got off the main interstate, hopped on old Route 66, and started heading to the mine. At this point, I only have a few hours and three hours left to drive and a little over four hours until we reach the mine. The sun starts coming down, and I run out of hours, so I'm forced to spend the night in the middle of the desert hours at any sort of gas station or anything. As we're sitting there chilling in the truck, we both get this very odd feeling, and we try to shrug it off as anxiety. It's pitch black out, but a kind of darkness where if you stuck your hand out, you wouldn't be able to see it, and that eerie feeling came back, so we decided to sleep it out. I'm not sure what time it was, but we woke up hours later, in the middle of the night, to pounding on our door and scratching on the floor panels of my truck. Then we start hearing it on the roof of my truck walking, and while it violently jerks the door handles, trying to get inside, this continues for over an hour, and I get so sick of it that I decide to open the curtains and turn on my lights, but as soon as I do, it stops abruptly. There's nothing to be found outside. My brother and I have told this story and several others, but no one believes us, but we know what we heard. I was 10 years old, and my family had just moved to the rural area of Wisconsin, where my mother was from. This area is very focused on agriculture, the landscape is dotted with small family farms and croplands. Scattered everywhere are those big red barns, most of them over 100 years old at this point. This was one of the first times I had driven along the highway that takes us to the nearest city. I was looking out the window at all the small farms along the roadside when I saw something out of the ordinary. Men in button-down shirts with black pants and overalls appeared to be building a barn. They were doing it the old-fashioned way, I clearly remember seeing some of them straddling the beams of what would be the hayloft, hammering in nails. Horses were assisting with hoisting large beams up. 
since we were just driving by, I just watched until we passed. None of this phased me at the time. There were many Amish communities living in that area, and I just assumed it was them. I didn't think of it again until we were once again on that road. I remembered the men and their work and wondered about how much progress they could have made in the few days that had passed. I was looking forward to seeing it. As we came upon the spot where I had seen them, the barn wasn't there. Well, it was, kinda. It was in ruins, obviously abandoned for decades. The wood was grey and worn, and it almost completely collapsed in on itself. The structure was partially covered with thick underbrush and young trees. I turned to my mother and asked how long the barn had been like that. She was very confused by my question and guessed it had always been like that. She did not remember ever seeing anyone near the barn, even though she was in the car with me when I saw them. Seeing something like that isn't something you'll just forget in a few days. What was left of the barn is completely gone now, but I always think about what I saw when I pass it. Sure, there are probably tons of rational explanations, but I like to think that time got thin just for a moment. I have never been a believer in paranormal events, and I have never come across anything in my life before this that could not be logically explained. I'm still trying to find a logical explanation, but I simply don't have one. My best friend currently works at a transitional living facility for young adults, and his hours are never consistent, so we usually end up hanging out late at night. Last week, on Wednesday, he came over to my house after his shift ended. Shortly after 2 a.m., we drove to Jack in the Box to get some food, and on the way back, we saw something that I still don't understand. We were getting fairly close to my house on what most people would consider a back road, we live in the rural Midwest, they are normal to us, and we were just shooting the SHT and talking about some music that we were practicing. I remember the conversation completely stopping as I noticed a bright orb of yellow light that was just hovering on the road. I remember just staring at it and thinking of nothing else as I drove right through it. Afterwards, neither of us said anything, and I felt an overwhelming sense of brain fog. My friend is the one who broke the silence, and he asked me, did you see something? I could tell from his voice that he was just as confused as I was. I told him that I saw the ball of light, and he confirmed that he saw the same thing. I don't think I can explain just how strange we felt after we encountered the orb. We got back to my place and just picked up our food without much conversation. Neither of us were afraid or concerned, we both just agreed that we were struggling to come up with words and that we were very tired. It felt similar to the feeling of a long day in the sun and afterwards being drained of the energy to do anything but rest or sleep. We are both used to staying up at these hours normally, and we usually don't sleep until 5 or 6 in the morning. After that night, nothing else strange happened. We both felt normal again the next day, and we bounced ideas off of each other as to what we saw. The road is surrounded by trees, and there are no houses nearby where the orb of light was. The only nearby landmarks are a train track that we drove over about two miles before we saw it, and a lake that people occasionally walk around a few miles after. There isn't much to do in our town, I tried to think of what the orb logically was, and the best I could come up with was a projection. It was fairly large, about the size of an exercise ball. The big ones that I remember rolling around on as a kid. There was not a stream of light leading to the orb, and there were no residential areas anywhere close, so the projection idea doesn't really have much merit. The yellow color that the orb had was vibrant and seemed to be glowing, but it was not blinding, and it was not hard to look at. It didn't seem to be the shade of yellow I would expect from a bulb or man-made source of light, it appeared to look more like a solid object, but driving through it proved that it was not. Does anyone else have any ideas about what we saw? Or have you encountered anything similar? I am usually able to come up with satisfactory conclusions when I have seen something I don't understand at first, but this truly has me stumped. I would have written it off as me seeing things if I hadn't had my friend with me. I don't believe this to be anything sinister, and we have not felt threatened or afraid of what we saw. I just want to put my curious mind at ease. So I've been seeing this girl for close to a month now, and things are going very well between us. We're both into conspiracies, paranormal stuff, spirituality, and all that weird, interesting stuff. She lives in a very small town in central Florida that I stay over at sometimes. Just a couple days ago, we were going on a small hike after we both got off of work, like 15 minutes down the road or so, probably 3 miles long altogether. Funnily enough, the topic of skinwalkers got brought up just before we left. We get to the trail, and everything is normal. The only thing to note is that, towards the start of the trail, I spot a coral snake and stop her and her dog from stepping on it. For those who don't know, coral snakes are extremely venomous and rather rare, as far as I know. I don't really like snakes, but she doesn't mind them. So I got the all-familiar minor heebie-jeebies for a bit after spotting it, but we continued on. At the center point of the trail, 
there is this long bridge that goes to an overlook of a lake, so we stopped there for a few minutes to take in the view. It was around sunset, so it was nice. We were just taking it all in for a bit. I didn't even think about it, but after talking about it with a friend, I did hear a strange, high-pitched sort of animal noise a few times in the minutes before we left. She works with various animals and has for around three years, but neither of us could really recognize what the sound was, although she only recently moved to Florida, so who knows if it's relevant or not. Anyway, we start to head down the bridge, as it is going to be dark soon. As soon as we get to the end of the bridge, her dog starts hauling ass, as if it's chasing something, although there is clearly nothing in front of him and I can see for a good ways down the trail. I get a really, really bad feeling in the pit of my stomach, and the dog takes a sharp right into the woods. As soon as he takes that turn, a deer bounds out of the woods from the left, opposite where he ran, and stops maybe 30 feet in front of us on the trail. She and I are calling for her dog to come back to us as the deer stands there watching. There is this super loud machine noise that keeps crescendoing up and down. I am pretty certain it was an airboat, but it's adding to some pretty spooky vibes already. Night is quickly falling, and the deer remains on the trail, watching us as we call for her dog. It kind of creeps my girlfriend out and she eventually yells at it to go away after like 5 to 7 minutes. It bounds away into the woods, like 20 feet, and stops to watch us some more. We go off trail a bit to try and call for her dog, and the deer finally runs off for good, followed by a small pack of deer when it finally does. It's definitely dark out now, and we head back to the trail in case her dog has circled around, so neither we nor her dog get lost. We actually get to the trail at the same time as her dog does. Keep in mind that we've been calling him this whole time, but he ends up limping back to the trail and doesn't seem to respond to our calls. He's been gone for around 20 minutes, the longest she has ever seen him run off for, of the few times he has, and he is definitely ducked up. He is panting like crazy, his neck is covered in salivation, he is limping from his back leg, whose paw is curling, and his gaze isn't all there. When you look at him directly, you can tell he's not really seeing you, even if his eyes seem to be looking in your direction. Again, it's completely dark by now, and he obviously needs a vet, so I pick him up, and we haul ass the 1.5 miles or so back to her car. We're half running, and running for short bursts, by her phone flashlight so we don't step on any snakes, and almost the whole way back we keep hearing loud rustling in the woods or fields we pass through. At least a boar-sized animal was out there, I couldn't think of anything else in Florida that would make that much noise, which definitely added to the fear of the situation. The machine noise is also still blaring at slow crescendo, it legit felt like a scene out of a horror movie. To make a very long story short, her dog was definitely bit by a snake, likely a coral snake, from a blood test he received. We had to drive 2.5 hours away at 11 pm to get antivenom from UF, but he ended up being okay, and we picked him up yesterday. The whole situation felt very off in a weird way, and I thought it was quite strange that a deer would stop on the trail to watch us like that for so long. There were tons of hunting blinds throughout the area too, so I can't imagine the deer would be that friendly in that area. The dog was not chasing anything I could see, and again, the trail was definitely clear for a long time. He took a very sharp right when he went into the woods. It was almost like something was calling him, saying, come, come this way, and leading him to the snake. Immediately after he ran into the woods, that deer came out to watch us. And just before all this occurred, we heard some strange, slightly high-pitched mammal sounding animals out around the marshes of the lake. Not to mention the loud as duck rustling as we were rushing to get out of there. The loud machine noise obviously isn't related to anything paranormal, but it definitely made the vibes more creepy. I don't know for sure if it was anything spooky, but based on how many things we talk about end up happening to us soon after, I don't know. I know skinwalkers are like a regional thing for the southwest, but who knows what sort of similar things may be out there. Then again, it could be more of a spirit, if anything. There were a lot of weird aspects to that encounter, for sure. We actually agreed to talk about pleasant things only for a while for that reason, although for the past few days since that encounter, we've both felt really uneasy or anxious and have had a lot more negativity in our thoughts than usual. We actually just discussed it last night, I guess we were both feeling it but didn't bring it up until then. I live in an apartment about an hour from my parents' house, and they came to bring a few things. The plan was that once they left, I would also leave and spend a few days at their house. So they left, and I had to do a couple things in my apartment before I left. They texted me when they were driving away, and I left about 10 minutes after that. I was driving on the highway for about 30 minutes when I came up to a car that looked like theirs. I don't know their license plate by heart, I only know a couple letters and numbers, and the license plate on this car was one I had definitely never seen before. As I passed, I took a quick look at the driver, 
and it was my dad with my mom in the passenger seat. They were going significantly slower than me, so they went out of view pretty quickly. It's important to note that in my town, there are multiple ways to get off the highway to get to my parents' house. The way I usually go is all back roads, so it saves about 5 to 7 minutes compared to the main roads. When I finally got home, I was surprised to see my parents' car in the driveway. I have no idea how they could have possibly gotten home before me since they never passed me and there are no shortcuts. Here's where it gets weird. I asked my mom which way they got off the highway, and they went the way with the main roads, which, out of all of them, takes the longest. I told her how I passed them, and they said they saw a car that looked like mine pass them, but with a different license plate and driver. I'm convinced we all experienced a glitch in the matrix. I used to work on the north slope of Alaska in the oil industry. The work we were doing required us to travel far out into the Alaska Petroleum Reserve, which is basically just untamed tundra wilderness for hundreds of miles. The oil companies would build these long ice roads in the winter, which would lead to exploration drilling pads. Our job was to go out after they finished the initial drilling and test rock formations for their oil producing qualities. It was mid-January, and the sun hadn't quite come up yet. And when I say the sun hadn't come up, I mean in almost a month and a half. Polar nights are intense. The particular well site we were traveling to was about 60 miles west of Alpine, Alaska. Deep in the wilderness. Our job took a week, but we finished and were headed back to camp to finish our hitch and go home. At the beginning and end of the ice roads are guard shacks that you have to check in and out of for safety, no cell reception, and radios work only up to a distance. If you don't check in or out at a set time, they will come looking for you to ensure you're not a popsicle. It was about 4 in the morning, not that it mattered in the land of endless night, and we were halfway across the ice road. Travel was slow, as the speed limit on the roads was only 25 miles per hour. When something appeared on the road in our headlights. It was a man. In jeans, sneakers, and a hoodie jacket. I was walking down an ice road in the wilderness tundra at 4 a.m., and it was minus 20 degrees outside. It's not unusual for the local Inuit people to be out this far hunting. Maybe his snowmobile broke down and he's trying to get back to the guard shack? Seemed plausible. He didn't acknowledge us as our trucks rolled up next to him. He just kept shuffling forward. He didn't seem cold, his clothing, while totally not appropriate for this extreme weather, appeared warm and dry. We also noticed he wasn't Inuit, but Caucasian. I rolled down my window and asked if he needed any help and if he was okay. He still didn't acknowledge us, he just kept shuffling forward. His face was completely blank, devoid of any thought or emotion. The other guys in my truck suggested that maybe he was in an accident and in shock. I continued rolling my truck along with him as he trudged down the road, still trying to get his attention. Even in this extreme cold, I could occasionally get whiffs of a peculiar smell coming off him. He smelled. Acidic? If that makes sense, there was just a lot about this guy that made the hair on my neck stand up. The guy behind me in the truck's crew cab had had enough of all this. He rolled down his window and reached out to grab the guy. He later said he was just going to try to shake him out of his stupor. Before my buddy's hand could reach him, this walking popsicle spun around and latched onto my buddy's outstretched arm. He glared at my buddy and then at me with this look of pure rage, not removing his hand from his arm. If emotions had a physical temperature, this guy could have melted the entire tundra that night. My buddy groaned in pain as he tried to get his arm free from Mr. Popsicle. At that moment, this guy starts screaming in our faces. There was so much hate, rage, and anger in that scream. It was absolutely terrifying. I slammed on the gas and spun out on the ice for a second before the wheels caught and launched us forward. Popsicle dude still had a hold of my buddy's arm and was trying to pull him out of the truck. He was running along with the truck while the other guys in the cab held onto my buddy to keep him inside. After several moments, if it could only have been a few seconds at most, my buddy tore free from this guy, and we hauled asses to the guard shack another 30 miles down the road. We checked in with the guards and reported what we had just seen. The guard was looking at us like we were pulling a prank, but policy said they had to check it out regardless. My buddy's arm was sore, and when he pulled back his sleeve, there were noticeable bruises in the shape of a hand around his arm. We filed a report with the guard, and we've been told to head back to our camp. None of us really wanted to talk about what happened, and it was a quiet drive the rest of the way. We flew home the next day. The next time we saw the guard at this shack, we asked him if they ever saw Mr. Popsicle on his patrols. He told us they searched up and down that ice road for a solid 12-hour shift and saw nothing, not even tracks in the snow leading off the road. He told us it was a good prank and that he'd get us back for making him waste a shift driving around. But it wasn't a prank. Who would make up a story like that? And who would willingly bruise their arm for a dumb prank? 
we never got a satisfying answer to what happened that evening. I still wonder about that dude, if he even was a dude. The Alaskan tundra is a weird place, and that was just one of my many weird stories from my time up there. When I was 10, I'm 36 now, my mother, 31, aunt, 28, almost 3 months pregnant, sister, 5, and myself were Christmas shopping in a town about 45 minutes from my home. My father, a Southern Baptist preacher at the time, always made my mom call him on a pay phone before we would leave the town we were in to head home. My mother did so right around 9 p.m., when the mall we were at was closing. After hitting up a drive through for drinks and snacks, we began our drive home. We would take a route home that consisted almost entirely of back roads. Roads with farmland on either side, occasional forests, or farm homes. We are driving along a patch of road with farmland on our left that has a small patch of forestry behind it. As we close the distance between us and the mini forest, one of the adults says, it looks like those trees over there are on fire. I look, and the wooded area is glowing a fiery orange. We are all looking in the direction of the trees, directly to our left now, when a brilliant white light, akin to semi-truck brights, floods our car, and the source appears to be directly in front of us on the road. If you've ever passed out, you'll know what I mean when I say it's different from waking up. You're just aware again or something. Anyhow, it was like that for me. I open my eyes to see my mom and aunt wordlessly staring at each other. I look around the car to see the windows are lightly frosted over, and my exhales are visible in the super cold car. My sister is just sitting there, staring at the seat back in front of her. My aunt says to my mom, guess we can't get that loaf of bread you needed, to which my mom says nothing but instead starts up the car. We are in a small town about 15 minutes away from home, but not along our route home, in a mom and pop grocery store parking lot called Harvest Market, Ick. It's 2.30 am I'm aware that this should be impossible. We finish our journey home to be greeted by police cruisers in our driveway. My dad had called the police when we hadn't made it home at the expected time. A state officer drove our route home, which we would have taken, worried we were off the road somewhere. My father was furious, especially when my mother kept telling him she didn't know where we were. She was crying and so scared. The officer at our house was just glad we were home and left. My family was at the time very religious, so our five hours of lost time were just swept under the rug because there was no explanation that aligned with our perspectives. My aunt lost the baby without any indications that a miscarriage had occurred. The OB doctor told her the fetus must have reabsorbed itself into her body. I had night terrors for years afterwards, I would wake up drenched in sweat, unable to recall what it was in my dreams that had me so scared. I've since gotten over that, thank freaking God, I'm not claiming to have been abducted, but I can say with certainty that all four of us lost five hours, and my cousin just wasn't in my aunt's uterus anymore. I've kicked around the idea of regression therapy, but I don't know if I trust it would work, and if it did, I don't know if I want to know what happened. This sighting or encounter happened many years ago. My friend and I were driving down a road at about 3 a.m. This road usually had nobody on it at that time, but it was literally in the middle of the city, so seeing someone wasn't totally out of the realm of possibility. We drove down the road when we were nearly upon her, and both of us seemed to come to the realization that it was weird to see an old lady with a walker walking down the road at that time of night. As we drove by her, she stopped walking and slowly turned to face us. When she faced us, we both saw she had a pale green or gray tone to her skin and huge, all black eyes. I don't have any idea what she could have been. I've had people tell me she was a demon, alien, ghost, etc. I didn't get any particularly evil vibes from her, but we got out of there as fast as we could, nonetheless. I live in Texas. If there's one thing about us, it's that we're no strangers to long drives. I moved in with my grandparents in high school. My granddad, being the sweetheart that he was, drove me to school in the mornings and never complained about the 45-minute drive that it was each way. One particular morning it was dark, as it usually was during the time we had to leave in order to get there by 7 a.m. We were both rather quiet on the drive that morning and were content to listen to the talk radio that was playing. We were about 15 minutes into the drive when I noticed we were approaching fog on the highway. In my area, we don't get fog often. So, I genuinely don't know if fog usually builds up gradually or if it is normal to have just a thick curtain of insanely dense and unmoving fog appear in the short distance. That's not the part that weirds me out, though. It's what happened when we entered. When we entered, there was no visibility. There was no way to see the cars in the four or five lanes of traffic just on our side of the highway alone. They just vanished. It was so thick we couldn't see, but maybe there was a foot in front of us. But I noticed it was oddly quiet. I couldn't hear any of the traffic anymore or even the sound of the friction between our own tires and the road. Then, 
If the vibes weren't eerie enough, the fog turned into the brightest light engulfing the car imaginable. This wasn't potential headlights from the other side of the highway on the basis that the light was just too bright. It was like lightning striking us, except the duration was maybe a minute, I think. Every window you looked out was just this white light that almost hurt to look at. During this time, our radio started breaking up and eventually cutting out completely. And then, as quickly as the light came on, it just vanished. And when it did, the fog vanished too, and all the typical noises of the highway came flooding back, as did the radio. We both kind of looked at each other as if to say, that was strange, and when I even started to ask what it was, my granddad just said, I don't want to talk about it. I think it genuinely disturbed him. Another strange fact about it all is that the drive was mysteriously cut in half despite us going not even a third of the speed in the fog. Anyway, again, there has to be a reason that happened. What do you all think the light was? This incident happened about four to five months ago. It happened thankfully that I had someone in the car I was driving, or I too would have never believed my own eyes as well as my sanity. This one night we were going a little bit beyond local, it would be about a 45 minute ride. Driving on back roads to get there quicker, we were on the 78, a winding downhill road that brings you out to drive by the San Diego Wild Animal Park. I think in Asandito we were going to Valley Center for 15 to 20 minutes to get there. We were listening to AM radio, it was about 2.30 AM, with the show being on repeat since it ran from 10 PM to 2 AM this night was wildcard night, with people calling to share their strange encounter stories, etc. The weather was cool and clear, and we were on this back road from the beginning in Ramona, where I picked her up, not one car or person to be seen the whole way. As we passed the wild animal park, you went about a half mile until you either stayed right or stayed with the road curves to the left, which I did later. I navigate the curve, which straightens out pretty quickly. On our left is a massive field, possibly pasture of a local farm, and on our left side are trees, bushes, and shrubs clumped together with a stone wall that was back about 10 feet from brush with more field but dotted with trees, shrubs, and bushes. This land much further up had a home as well, but was barely seen at this point. When the straightening road started coming out of curve, we both were chatting about it, with both looking out straight, saying so to explain we both had a full straight on view as this happened. Like I said, as the car comes out of the curve immediately in front of it, coming out of the field to the left, go straight across to those trees and bushes. Gallops is the best way to describe what you would call its gait. Gallops are at a height of 12 feet. Yes, 12 feet tall, stick man? It was quick but very visible, as we both gasped at the same time. I was seriously stunned and shaken up, and my friend was in the same state. The lighting was my car lights, and there was a scattering of street lights. One we had passed on a curve, but the next one was about half mile ahead. I had my high beams on since the road behind us down the hill had a few at the bottom scattered. We both started sharing our views of what each other saw. Although I somehow saw a little more going up the figure than my friend, we both had the exact same description. I could only come up with stick man, as that was the immediate thought. Neither of us saw a head, we both saw an extremely tall figure, whose body or torso was a single, thicker, more than thin piece of wood, or what appeared to be wood. It had two sticks at the hip area that came off vertically with legs made of sticks that bent at the knee area, and for feet, large but proportioned sticks for feet. I saw a stick arm bent in the middle at its side but did not see shoulders, neck, or head. She did not see an arm or shoulders, a neck, or a head either. This, to say the least, left us both questioning what we saw, how on earth this thing was real, and so on and so forth. No, I did not pull over, no way, no how. I felt scared as well, and she did too. As we drove and discussed this, I started to get a bad headache and felt sick to my stomach. My friend felt weak, and we both felt no right. We kept on going to the casino, but it felt sure, and our minds and bodies almost felt assaulted. Finally, a friend in the area shows up and gets a room at the casino, and we go up to relax. He sees that we are both off. He asks what is wrong, and, well, we both couldn't explain. My friend stays to herself, and unbeknownst to me, she searched the description of our sighting, and can you believe that there have been sightings like ours all over the world? One sounded just like we were telling our story, it was so similar, it was scary. We don't talk about it, as it took days for both of these to feel better to feel right. I have told until today two others whom I trust to listen open-mindedly, she has told a few people to varied responses. I hope if anyone has seen this, they will come forward and share. I was 18 years old when this happened, in my senior year of high school. I started dating a girl who lived an hour away in Bogalusa, Louisiana, and would frequently drive out to go see her on the weekends. 
Bogalusa sits along a river and is surrounded by swamps. In my opinion, it's an area notorious for heavy fog and flooding. It is also a rural area, and it wasn't uncommon for someone to hit a deer when traveling to and fro. Being a young driver, my parents would ask that I be home no later than 11 p.m. to avoid this. On this particular day, it rained heavily throughout, and at night, it would be a foggy trip back to my home. The first half of the trip was normal, I drove at posted speeds and occasionally slowed down when I saw eyes in the tree line. This contributed to the eerie air surrounding these drives, I always felt like there was something lurking about and was tempted to gun it out of there. The only way I can describe the feeling accurately is to say that it was an atmosphere of stillness. Lights barely penetrated the fog, the rain had stopped, and the road was abandoned, it was like all life had stopped. Time passed, and halfway through the drive, I had finally reached a small bit of civilization. A Dollar General store left its lights on, a railroad track weaved through the road, and ahead of me, a car pulled out of a McDonald's drive through The car went pretty slowly, which ticked me off because I had to meet curfew, but I stayed behind it in hopes that it would pull off soon. Following down the road, the car and I left the little town. The path ahead was dark, so I kept a good following distance and tracked the car's tail lights. I was exhausted, the car had pushed me past curfew, and tomorrow, Monday, I was going to have school. Dozing off, I rolled down the windows to get some cool air and kept following the car. Minutes passed, and I was getting frustrated. We approached a railroad track that was slightly uphill, and being in a hurry, I pulled close behind the car I followed. Out of nowhere, the car in front of me jerked and skidded across the pavement. No more than eight feet in front of me, an emaciated figure curled onto the tracks. Pale white, with patchy bald hair, a man rocked back and forth, clawing at his face. I quickly threw the steering wheel to avoid him and swung my car around him. Maneuvering as best as I could, I managed to dodge him and slammed on the brakes once I passed. The car that I was following sped along, out of sight, I was alone in the surrounding fog. My heart was racing. I clicked on my hazards and unbuckled my seatbelt. Jutting myself out of the window, I stared back at what little the flashing lights could illuminate. Silence, nothing except for the ticking of my blinkers. Hello? I gently cried out. Are you alright? Did I hit you? In the distance, the man slowly postured himself upright and turned his head toward me. He stood there silently, unmoving, and then he let out the most inhuman scream I have ever heard. Breaking into a full sprint, he ran toward my vehicle. I quickly threw the car into drive and sped off from the scene. Not more than a minute later, I found that the people I had been following earlier had decided to pull around and park on the shoulder. I approached behind them and yelled out the window, Did you see that? Yeah. I'm going back. The driver responded to me while he simultaneously called the police. We eventually came back to where the man had been, but there was nothing, just an old railroad. I used to live in the middle of the woods. The only road into the area where I lived was long and winding and full of small hills and dips. It was, at least, a 15-minute drive from my house to the main road. It's important that I adhere that this road is a single road, and there are no driveways or turnoffs at any point until you get really close to my little neighborhood there's nowhere to pull off the road. It's all just wood on both sides. Back in 2014, when I lived in this house, I worked the late shift at my workplace, I'd go in at 5 in the afternoon and stay until 1 or 2 a.m., bringing in the last truck of inventory and breaking down pallets and working product. It meant I'd be driving home in the middle of the night in pitch darkness. Usually, I was the only car on the road at such a late hour. That was fine with me, because driving at night and having to look at oncoming headlights gives me migraines, and if there are no other drivers on the road, then there are no oncoming headlights to worry about. But this one night, I wasn't alone. There was another car on the road, about 200 feet ahead of me. I'd watched his taillights rise up over a small hill and disappear down the other side, and when I got to the top of the hill, there would be his taillights climbing the next hill. It was a little mesmerizing to watch his taillights rise and disappear over each hill. Until I reached the top of the next hill, his tail lights were nowhere to be seen. A bad feeling washed over me, and I slowed to a stop at the top of the hill and waited for the tail lights to reappear, but they never did. I pulled over with the intention of getting out and looking for an accident scene, but I was too scared to get out of my car. It was the middle of the night, and this area was known for coyotes and fisher cats. A brown bear had been spotted nearby recently. I'd come really close to being attacked by coyotes before, it wasn't an experience I was eager to repeat. From what I could see with my own high beams, nothing looked out of the ordinary. There were no brake marks, no tire tracks, no lights, no broken trees, or anything indicative of a car having just run off the road. My phone didn't have cell service in the middle of the woods, 
but I was pretty sure an emergency call would go through anyway. But what would I say? Hi, I'd like to report an accident I didn't see involving a car I don't see anymore and a crash scene I can't find, if it even exists, which I have no evidence for aside from what I may or may not have seen. To this day, I have no explanation for what happened. I've driven through that area many, many times since then, plenty of those times being in broad daylight, and I have looked around that area in an attempt to find anything to suggest what happened to that car that night, but I've never found anything. To my knowledge, there were no reported accidents in that area during that time frame. The car simply vanished without a trace. Back in late 2014, around October or November, I was 18 years old. I was very much enjoying my new freedom from the confines of childhood. At the time, I had just gotten my driver's license and drove a 1998 Chevy sports van. I did everything in this van, and because I had a hangout spot on wheels, I started making a lot of new friends. One night, when I went to go see some of my new friends, something happened that I cannot explain. It was late when I decided to drive some odd 25 miles to see my friends. Between my town and their town are just quiet, dark country roads. Every once in a while, I pass a driveway with a street light on the property. Ever since I was a kid, there had always been one road around the county that people liked to talk about. They called it Swamp Road. The road is located right past the local high school in the county closest to my town. This school is in the middle of nowhere, and it's just very eerie at night. The road itself is dark and quiet, located right in the middle of a large patch of woods, so at night it's even more terrifying. As I pulled onto the road, I managed to keep my cool. This road is a commonly used shortcut to where I was going, and I had no issue driving down it at the time. The road has several hills and then comes to an opening out of the woods, then banks right and then banks left again before hitting more hills and finally a stop sign. As I was hitting the last hill before the opening, at the edge of the woods, my eyes locked onto a bright white sheet on the side of the road. It was so distractingly bright that I almost ran off the road. I ended up passing the white sheet and continuing forward, but I started to think about things. I've always been one to think about bags on the side of the road. What if it's money, someone threw out a dog they didn't want, or something worse? My curiosity got the best of me, and once I hit the stop sign, I decided to turn back to see what it was. Right before the first turn, there is a small field entryway that I parked at. For some reason, I decided to turn off the headlights and shut the van off. I'm guessing it was my teen angst about not being afraid. The walk back to the edge of the woods was kind of longer, the only reason I didn't want to park closer is because a car could potentially come over the hill and get freaked out and wrecked because of the van being parked there. So I parked a little ways back and walked towards the edge of the woods. The moon was pretty bright, so it wasn't too scary, but once I got closer to the woods, some of the trees that were not quite dead yet covered up the light, making it nearly impossible to see. I pulled out my phone and turned on the flashlight to see that the sheet was completely gone. Nothing was there. My heart sank at first, but I just thought maybe it wasn't at this hill, maybe the next hill up. So as I was walking up the hill to see if it was on the next, I heard a rustling in the woods, I didn't even get the time to think, I didn't know if the sound was going away or coming towards me. All I remember was hearing something running fast in the woods, and it sounded like whatever it was was dragging something along the ground. I ran back to the van, started it, and immediately got out of there. During the drive to my friends, I tried to tell myself that whatever I just witnessed was completely understandable and rational. Maybe it was a sheet full of trash, and an animal had come and drug it away. They got spooked when they heard me walking towards them and ran away. I got to the park that I usually pick up my friends at and waited for them to get here. I got out of the van to throw something away near the bathrooms when I saw little wet handprints on the rear and side of the van. No joke, I was looking at dripping handprints on the windows of my van. There was no one in my van, I was the only one there. If maybe someone was trying to prank me back at Swamp Road, then how did the handprints stay wet through the whole drive to town? I was driving well over the speed limit because I was scared. To this day, this is the scariest thing that has ever happened to me. It's the last weird thing that has happened to me, and there is nothing that I can rationally think of as the reason. Back in the summer of 2017, my girlfriend and I were driving up from Evanston, Illinois, to spend the weekend at her parents' lakefront cottage in Petoskey, Michigan, a popular destination for summer retreats. This drive for us was around six hours long and involved taking the highway north through the western half of Michigan. A lot of this path goes through some fairly remote areas. Eventually, we found we had been driving on the same single lane highway road through some dense woods for what seemed like the last 45 minutes. I recall our navigation showing we were somewhere in the Huron Manistee National Forests. Also, when I say dense, I mean that the tree canopy formed almost a tunnel around the fairly narrow road, which made it seem significantly darker than it actually was outside. 
Luckily, summer days in Michigan are long, we still had a couple hours of daylight left. While driving, I noticed some older, dilapidated constructions in the woods to the right. It looked like the remains of old sheds or storage buildings. This is a good time to mention that I'm a bit of a treasure hunter I collect historical relics and old coins, and these ruins seem like a great place to dig up some artifacts that may have been buried for years. Also, this stretch of road was deserted, so it was unlikely others had explored this place first. Luckily, I had my metal detector with me in the car, as I had planned to use it on the beach at Petoskey. I also had one of those children's shovels, made of neon plastic with a wooden handle, for digging in the sand, and although it's not ideal for soil, it would do. I told my girlfriend I wanted to stop for a bit and pulled over on the shoulder, and she said okay, but she would stay back and continue napping. The nearest ruins were small, but not too far from the road itself. I figured the current highway must have originally been a backwoods road that the inhabitants could have used back in the day. However, I noticed a larger structure deeper into the forest and decided to check it out, as larger buildings that could have been people's homes and such have a higher chance of yielding a cool find. I made my way over and could see it was made of brick. The window holes were still clearly defined, with dirty, broken glass around the edges. I looked through one and could see the building, though half collapsed, had a floor that looked somewhat intact. Back towards the road, my car was just barely within my range of vision. Since it was dark around the ruins, I recall leaving my shovel outside, as I didn't need it for the hard floor, and using my free hand to hold my phone as a flashlight to help spot anything shiny. I snooped around the corner and started sweeping with the metal detector within the building walls, the roof was collapsed, for half an hour or so when I started to hear movement around me, like crunching twigs and bushes rustling. I dismissed this as a small animal at first, but I kept hearing it, almost as if it were following my movement around the building from the bushes on its perimeter. At this point, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I got the feeling I was being watched, like some animal was stalking me. I decided to turn back. I started hollering and making loud noises in hopes of scaring off whatever could be there, and cautiously made my way over to where I'd left my shovel. It was gone. And I'm certain I couldn't have misplaced it because it was neon orange and I had left it in the middle of a pretty open area, so there's no way I would have just not seen it. At this point, I was spooked enough to just say duck it and book it back to my car. Hopping back in the driver's seat, I could see my girlfriend was awake, and her eyes were wide. She told me that just a few minutes ago, while I was gone, she saw a child emerge from the forest and just look at her from several feet down the edge of the road. She described it as a boy, maybe seven or eight, with a dirty face and ragged clothes. She told me she was worried the boy was lost or left behind, but the way he looked at her made her uneasy. He said he didn't look afraid or curious but just looked at her with a gaze that seemed off for a lost child. She told me she still wanted to notify the police but wasn't comfortable leaving the car or calling out to the kid, who by now had disappeared. I hadn't yet told her about my experience with the ruins, but at this point, my heart was beating, and I just felt very uneasy about this whole thing. As I looked up the non-emergency number for the nearest sheriff's office on my phone, my girlfriend screamed my name. I looked up, and there was a boy similar to the one she described, just looking directly at us from the edge of the woods, a few feet from the passenger door. I was alarmed to see another, similar boy right outside the back window, peering into the back seat. At this point, I didn't care anymore, I just turned the car on and accelerated the duck out of there. After a few seconds of driving, I looked in my rearview mirror, and the boys disappeared into the forest as fast as they had come. I sped over the limit, for God knows how long, until we were clear out of those woods. We ended up still calling the sheriff's office, who mentioned there have been similar sightings of children along that road by other drivers. Though I never got a good look, I agreed with my girlfriend that something was off about those kids and that their behavior didn't match that of lost children. Maybe they lived on a nearby, secluded property with their parents and were just playing in the woods or trying to steal our shit I had also heard of feral children which could explain the dirty faces and raggedy clothes. Later, at the cottage, I searched for similar paranormal sightings. Apparently, melonheads, a band of feral children with enlarged heads, have been spotted in the forests of Michigan, just a couple hours away from where we had been. They could have also been black-eyed kids. Upon asking my girlfriend this, she said she was sure that boy staring at her didn't have black eyes, or she would have noticed. However, his mannerisms, as she described them, seemed very similar to the stories I've read about Beck, so it's a possibility. If anyone has insight into this or similar experiences, I'd love to hear them. The experience creeps me out to this day, and we ended up taking a different route on the way back from Petoskey just to avoid driving through that forest again. My mom and I drove to a local city in late October last year. It was about 7pm on an unlit main road, and after the clocks went back, it was near pitch black, 
barring the headlights from the three or four cars on our side, none driving the other way. I remember talking with my mom while concentrating on the road, and I saw the car around 20 meters in front of me swerve suddenly, going on to the other side of the road. I assumed it was a corner, and the driver cut it slightly since I hadn't driven on that road before in the dark. A couple of seconds later, my mom screamed at me to swerve. It was only then that I noticed that there was an elderly man standing about a third of the way across our side of the road. He was wearing the typical English West Country farmer slash hunter outfit, brown gray flat cap, brown tweed, jacket, brown trousers, and a wooden cane, so nothing light colored would make him easier to see. What creeped me out the most was how he was staring straight into oncoming traffic, his mouth agape slightly, not flinching or moving in any way. Luckily, I didn't hit him. I couldn't stop shaking for the rest of the journey. We drove on that same road about an hour and a half later, and he was gone. I checked the local newspapers and sites a few days later, but I couldn't find a single report on him or if he ended up okay. Also, the road in question barely had any houses or buildings on it, let alone any near where he was. I have no idea how he got there. This is an encounter that's happened to my sister a few times now, and each time it's gotten worse. For context, my sister worked at a large event location in Suffolk, UK. Because of her job, she would often end up driving back home from Suffolk, across the county border to Norfolk, quite late some nights when it had already gotten dark, and she'd always be doing this drive alone. A couple of months ago, while she was doing this, she gave me a call while she was going down a secluded country lane, as she had just seen something on the road. That something was a tall white figure standing to one side, dressed in flowing, dirty white material. The thing apparently had long limbs and stood slightly taller than a normal person, and she said she saw its face very briefly underneath the material. Not for long enough to register what they looked like, but just enough to realize what she'd done. Being paranormal enthusiasts, me and my sister already knew a little about women in white ghosts, and so seeing this figure freaked her the hell out. Not only that, but she had had her windows open, and after she passed this figure, her seat nav stopped working, she got lost, and she even started to feel breath on the back of her neck. I'm a practicing pagan, so she called me while she was driving, thinking I could help, and I talked to her to calm her down and talked her through some bits I thought might help. Namely, telling her to not look at her back seats or in her inside mirror if something was behind her, to not stop driving, to invoke the name of a local pagan deity for protection, and then to tell whatever was with her that whilst she meant no disrespect to it, it hadn't been invited into her vehicle, and so she respectfully requested that it leave. It took about 20 minutes on the phone with her until she finally managed to get off of the back roads she was on and hit a town, and as soon as she did, the breathing on the back of her neck disappeared, the satnav started working again, and her sense of dread started to lessen. I told her when she got home to burn sage and sense around her car and herself, to draw a pentacle to put under her pillow for protection, and to try to watch something funny before she went to bed so she wasn't falling asleep scared. Then I told her to always make sure there was something, like a bag or personal items, on every single one of the empty seats in her car while she was driving that way in the future, as an empty seat can be seen as an invitation. And that seemed to be the end of it for a while. However, about a month later, I got another call. The same thing had happened. Her lights had stopped working on the drive, so she'd pulled over, and when she looked up, she saw the tall white figure again, right by her passenger side door. She was tall enough that she only saw its hand and body in the window, but she thought it looked as though it was reaching for the door, freaking out, as she'd realized she'd forgotten to put anything on the seats behind her, she immediately locked the car, started driving again, and called me, and we repeated the same actions as before. This time, though, I noticed heavy static on the radio in the background while on the phone. It was only afterwards that my sister told me the radio hadn't been on. Finally, last night, I got another call from my sister. The same thing had happened again. As she'd been driving, she'd seen the figure standing next to a giveaway sign. She said the figure was easily as tall as the sign, one arm pointed to the ground, and the other was stretched out to the side over the sign itself. Its face this time seemed to be completely covered in the white material it wore, but its arms were long and thin. Once again she called me, and once again she felt breath on the back of her neck, again, she'd realized she'd forgotten to put anything on the seats behind her. This encounter, though, was much worse. She's driving a new car this time, and this one has sensors on the seats that can tell when someone is sitting on a seat without the seatbelt done up. And well, the sensor on the dashboard starts blinking at her to tell her someone or something is sitting behind her. Not only that, but it started blinking from seat to seat, as if the thing was moving around in the back. Not only that, but this time as she's driving, her lights give out completely, so she has to slow to a crawl so that she can see where she's going, 
and she doesn't drive off the road without actually stopping. I go through the same actions with her as before and go through the polite request that anything in the car leave. And this time, it doesn't seem to go well. She gets the fright of her life when a pair of rolled up socks that had been in her bag in the back get thrown into the front. Thrown hard enough, it hits the air freshener dangling from her inside mirror and bounces off the dashboard. I suspect that the thing may have been trying to get her to look in her mirror. To look at it. She's really freaked out now, and she starts to smell burning. But she sees a car driving up ahead. So she speeds up to try and catch up with it so she's not on the road alone, it gets close enough that if it were to break, she'd also have to break to stop herself from going into the back of it. She looks down for a second to try and turn her lights back on, and when she looks up, the car has gone. Just completely vanished. It almost sounds cliche, but trust me, when you're hearing this live as it's happening from someone who's in tears because they're so scared, it doesn't feel cliche, it feels downright terrifying. Again, though, she manages to get past the country roads and into a town. However, at this point, she realizes that she missed a whole stretch of road. There was a roundabout on the road she was on that she should have gone over but just didn't. It was as if she skipped an entire section. When she gets to the town, though, her lights come back and her satnav stars are working again. But the sensors in the back still read as if something's there. She gets home, turns the car off, and realizes why the sensors were reading something. Her bag, which had been zipped up in the footwell of one of the back seats, was now open on one of the chairs, and stuff from inside her bag was everywhere, scattered about over the seats and the floor. As if something had picked it up, I opened it and started going through it. I've implored her to make sure she's covering all her seats in the future when driving alone and to get a pentacle that she can keep in the car for protection. And she's going to go to a mutual friend of ours who has some experience seeing things like this to see if they can help. But I've been researching local ghost stories and folklore and even trying to find other experiences of tall white ghosts on the road like this. But I've not been able to find much. One last thing is that it's not even the same road that this has been happening on each time. If it were, I could just tell her to go home another way. But this has been happening on different roads in different sections, but always on this same journey coming back home from Suffolk. Does anyone have any idea what this might be? And if so, do you know what she can do to get this thing to leave her alone? This incident happened about three years ago. Me and three of my buddies from college had heard about this supposed haunted bridge near our school. The bridge was said to be located near Anderson, South Carolina. It was about an hour's drive to the bridge. We all piled into my buddy's jeep and made our way to the bridge. When pulling on the dirt road that gives you access to the bridge, you have to cross a new bridge that replaces the original. So basically, imagine the two bridges being parallel to one another, except the new bridge is now the one being used for everyday travel. The other is set back in the woods, about 30-40ish yards. So we pulled the jeep up to the little dirt path that looked relatively untouched, minus the gate that was put up that said no trespassing. So we parked the jeep in front of the gate, hopped out, and climbed over on foot. Once over the gate, it was about a 20-yard walk down to the bridge. Everything was going smoothly at first. We made it out onto the bridge, looking and listening for anything out of the ordinary. We were there for about 10 minutes with no action. So we searched the bridge online once again to be sure we were at the right place. Upon searching the info, we clicked that read like instructions on how to have experiences at the bridge with the ghost. The myth, or whatever you want to call it, was that a man back in the 1800s was driving his horse-drawn carriage over the bridge and stopped with his wife and daughter to take a look at the view. The husband then pushed the wife and daughter over the side of the bridge, taking both their lives. Apparently his motive to do this was because he wanted a son, and his wife did not provide that. Back to the experience, so the instructions said to ask out loud, where is your baby? Or I have your baby. Supposedly, this attracts the mother in some sort of way or causes you to hear a baby crying. So being the stupid college kids we were, we began yelling these sayings with some obscenities included. One of my buddies yelled, I've got your ducking baby, you stupid witch. Well, whoever or whatever it was out there did not like this. I kid you not. The coldest gust of wind I had ever felt in my life passed by all of us in what felt like an instant. However, looking back, we didn't take this as a sign of anything paranormal. Just some gust of wind at a coincidental time. Well, we decided that since nothing was happening, we would call it a night and head back to campus. We were walking pretty much huddled up back to the jeep. We got about three quarters down the bridge when, all of a sudden, we heard footsteps coming from the other end of the bridge. Mighty heavy footsteps might I add? One of my buddies yelled OSHT, which led to us making a mad dash back to the jeep. While I was running, the footsteps seemed to get louder and louder. These steps also came with what sounded like wheezing. 
like someone with severe asthma trying to run in the cold. We hopped the gate and got in the jeep, spinning tires in the mud, to get off that dirt path. It was late, so the ground became heavy, and the jeep had gotten mud all over the sides and back window. We all got in the jeep, heavy breathing, and asked one another, what was that? And did you hear those footsteps? We came up with theories and ideas the entire ride back to campus. One thing we all agreed on was that we had all been spooked by something unexplainable. It doesn't end there, however. Once we reached campus, we got out of the jeep and began to walk back to the dorms. But when I got out of the back seat on the passenger side, I decided to walk around the backside of the jeep to see how dirty it had gotten. Well, to my surprise, a massive handprint was on the back of the jeep's bumper, imprinted in the mud. Or maybe it was a handprint with long claws. I couldn't tell for the life of me. But I pointed it out to my buddies, and we all measured our hands to the size of the print, and no one came close to fitting it. I think you guys would have a lot of insight on something that happened to my friend when he was driving home around 4am my friend and I both live in Austin, and at the time he was driving from the campus area to South Austin. I believe my friend is a reliable source because he's not the type of guy who seeks out paranormal stuff or outright overreacts to experiences. So the story is that on his way home, my friend saw this car-like rover thing that was in the middle of the road. He described it as a tank with a missile-like structure that is upright, kind of like an IMB loaded onto a vehicle. At first, he thought it was like a sort of remote control car toy, but as he got closer, he realized this object was a lot bigger. As he was driving down the hill, he saw this object's missile-like head wobble back and forth to turn around and speed off in the same direction he was driving, almost like this object saw this car coming. As it was going down the hill, this object started to disappear out of my friend's view, and he could only see the tip of the missile structure. So my friend sped up, but by the time he reached the bottom of the hill, the object was nowhere to be seen. He tried to look for it but couldn't find any trace of it. I was driving alone on my way home. It was about 10 pm, and I had just dropped my kids off with their dad for the weekend, he lives about 30 miles away from me. I had my radio on, just singing away. I love nighttime drives, they bring me peace. The road I was on is a road I take every single day of my life, literally. I am very familiar with this road. I know it like the back of my hand. The road is a back road that leads from the town my dad lives in straight to my town. I always choose to take this back road over the interstate because they've been doing road construction and the interstate is restricted to one lane, with the other lane being oncoming traffic. Anyways, I was driving along, radio blasting, singing to the very top of my lungs, and only about 10 miles from my house, when the radio completely went static. When I say static, I mean, it actually did the weird static sound and then completely went silent. I looked around, and all of a sudden I couldn't recognize where I was. I hadn't made any wrong turns. Keep in mind that this is a road I travel on at least twice daily, to get to work, to drop my kids off, etc. I knew for a fact I was where I should be. The landmarks were all the same, same hills, similar tree lines, but the buildings that were there before were all gone, and the road looked, well, old. I slowed down, just to take it all in, I guess. There was a wooden structure on the side of the road, it looked like an old cottage house, and I had never seen it before. The strangest thing about the house was that there was an old buggy outside. When I say buggy, I mean, like, a horse and buggy type thing. A little further ahead, I noticed a light. When I got closer, I realized it was a little fire out in front of another structure. This structure was very similar to the other, it looked super old, and I believe it was a house. Next to the fire was a man, he was dressed in old time clothes. I literally stopped to look at him. I was so shocked. He had on suspenders, a white shirt, and a very long beard, and he actually noticed me and ran inside. I started to pull away when he came back outside, but this time with a woman. The woman was dressed in one of those dresses that bell out at the bottom. It was like they were from a totally different century. He pointed to my vehicle, and his wife, or whoever she was, covered her mouth with both hands like she was in shock. It's almost like they had never seen a car before, at least not one like mine. I only drive a 2017 Yukon, lol, nothing special, it's just my mom's vehicle, anyway, the man and woman just stood there, with huge looks of disbelief on their faces. They kind of seemed scared, honestly. I pulled away, kept going, and noticed that nothing was the same as how I remembered it. Literally nothing, there were no street signs anymore, the side roads that were once there were completely gone, only to be replaced with fields, and I knew for a fact I wasn't going the wrong way. It's literally just a straight shot from my kid's father's house to mine. Once you get on that road, you don't even have to make any turns. It's literally impossible to get lost. 
There were wells on the sides of the road that I had never seen before, old structures that looked like 18th or 19th century houses, sorry, I am not too familiar with centuries or anything, but these houses looked like they were straight off little houses on the prairie, everything did. There were horses tied up, fires going, people dressed in old time clothing, and nobody had a vehicle. Everyone that saw me pass by looked absolutely petrified. Even the air felt different. Everything was different. I kept driving for about three or four more minutes, passing a few more structures, some that looked like little stores, and then all of a sudden, boom, my radio comes back on, the air feels normal again, and I look around and I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I'm driving on the road I knew I had been on the entire time, just a little further down, and everything looked normal again. Keep in mind that I did not make a single turn, not even one. This road is a straight shot, besides a few curves. The road didn't look old anymore, there were no more old houses or strangely dressed people. I was so confused that I actually pulled my truck over, did a quick U-turn, and went back, only to find absolutely nothing out of the ordinary there. Nothing. I know what I saw. It was not a daydream, I didn't fall asleep, none of that. I literally made eye contact with the one guy in the suspenders before he ran to grab his wife to show her my vehicle or whatever he was pointing out to her. I have lived here my entire life. 25 years. There are no Amish communities here. There are a few about three hours north of me, but none here, and I have taken this road two times a day for the last 10 years. I truly don't understand. Why wasn't it there when I immediately turned back around? I don't know what has happened to me. It's almost like I stumbled across an entirely different time. Or place? Maybe I slipped through some sort of portal? I do not know.